In the symphony of Formula One, there was once a note so powerful, so distinct, it couldn't be ignored. This is the swan song of Ferrari V12, the Ferrari 412T2. As we delve into this narrative, let's set the stage with the mid-90s, a time of transformation in F1, when technological prowess and strategic choices would shape the destiny of legends. In 1994, the world of Formula One faced one of its darkest moments with the tragic death of Ayrton Senna, an icon of the sport. This heart-wrenching incident served as a clarion call, leading to a sea of change in F1 regulations and priorities. Safety, now more than ever, was paramount. Car designs were overhauled, tracks were modified, and advanced electronic driver aids, once heralded as the pinnacle of F1 technology, were now banned. In the wake of these sweeping changes, the 1995 Formula 1 grid showcased a wave of futuristic V10s and V8s. Yet amid this modern fleet, there stood one defiant tribute to the past, a singular, beautiful V12. From the beginnings of Formula 1 in the 1950s, Ferrari's V12 engines have been emblematic of the Scuderia's racing spirit. Enzo Ferrari, the brand's founder, had a profound belief in the power and potential of the V12 configuration. The 125F1, Ferrari's first Formula 1 car, debuted in 1948 with a V12 heart, setting the precedent for a storied lineage. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, this engine configuration became synonymous with Ferrari's pursuit of excellence, powering legends like the 312 and its variants. Whether it was the raw power of the early years or the sonorous wail with the three litre units in the 90s, the V12 bore witness to numerous victories, innovations and iconic moments. Over decades, as the dynamics of the sport shifted, with the changing regulations and technological advancements, Ferrari's commitment to the V12 remained unwavered. Yet, as its competitors were harnessing the might of their V10s, the Ferrari 412T2 emerged as the Scuderia's final V12 hurrah. And behind the scenes during that 1995 season, Ferrari was already developing their own V10 engine, preparing to join a new era of F1 racing. But as the season progressed, the dominance of the Renault RS7 V10 engine became unmistakable. Partnered with Benetton and Williams, these engines began to set the pace, leaving competitors in their wake. The power and efficiency of Renault's V10s, combined with their technological partnerships, meant that they weren't just winning races, they were setting the tone for the entire sport. In an evolving F1 landscape, this engine's superiority was both a symbol of progress and a challenge for the remaining vestiges of a bygone era. But this isn't the story of the V10s. This is the story of the last V12, the Ferrari 412T2, and it didn't go down without a fight. Imola, 1995, a racetrack rebounding from tragedy, remade and remolded, the ghosts of Senna and Ratzenberger still fresh in everyone's mind as the engines roared and the grandstands vibrated with energy. Right there in the middle of it all was the Ferrari 412T2, the prancing horse ready to race on its home turf. And what a race it was. If Imola's old Tamburello corner could talk, it would tell the tales of its glorious and heartbreaking past. But in 1995, it whispered of change, a whispered of chicanes, slowing the beasts that dared tread the asphalt. Another chicane rose to prominence before Tosa, making sure that any car that dared race had their sprints curtailed. The air was thick with anticipation on qualifying day, and boy oh boy did it deliver. Gerhard Berger, steering the glorious red beast, nearly stole the show, just a breath, a mere eight thousandths of a second away from pole, and he ended up being eclipsed by the reigning champion, Michael Schumacher. But the Ferrari fans, the passionate Tifosi, they knew their hero had fired the opening salvo. The Williams pair of Hill and Coulthard took the next spots, with the Scott behind the Englishman creating a grid ready for a duel. Then, in true Italian drama, the skies opened up on race day, pouring down on the tarmac. The conundrum of rubber began. To slick or not to slick? That was the question. The top drivers, including those in the 412T2, and the persistent Barrichello braved the wets, while the others gambled with slicks. As the lights went out, it became apparent. Wets were the order of the day. Schumacher, Berger, and Hill danced away, leaving the slick gamblers floundering. Five seconds a lap. It was like watching gazelles sprint past tortoises. But then again, the tarmac dried, and it was pit stop pandemonium. Off came the wets, onto the slicks. The lead built by the front runners was so vast it felt like they were in a different time zone. But the race wouldn't be so straightforward. Schumacher, on his fresh slicks, had a date with the barrier, a swirl and a crash, and the defending champion was out. He blamed a failure, but there were whispers in the paddock that it was driver error. Benetton's boss, Flavio, didn't even stick around to debate. He was visibly storming off on the day. But now the stage was set. Hill and Berger, mano a mano, but alas, 
Ferrari's pit stop woes struck Berger, putting him behind teammate Alesi. It was a fierce duel between Alesi and Coulthard, with sparks flying between them, leaving Coulthard with a bruised front wing and a bruised ego. He had another hiccup with a pit lane speed violation, sidelining his challenge. In the end, the Englishman Damon Hill took the chequered flag, but the Ferraris with Alesi and Berger took the next two spots on the podium. The Tifosi didn't get their fairy tale win, but they had their heroes racing with gusto on their home turf. Behind them, Coulthard had to be content with fourth, followed by Hakkinen and Fretzen wrapping up the points. And so, amidst the echoes of roaring engines and the cheers of the Italian crowd, the Ferrari 412T2 had its moment in the sun in Imola. It wasn't its dream victory, but it was a race that told the story of resilience, strategy, and pure, unadulterated speed. It showed that the V12 wasn't dead, it can still fight at the front of Formula 1. And it wouldn't be long before they got to fight at the front of the grid again. Enter the 1995 Canadian Grand Prix, the redemption arc. It's June in Montreal in 1995. The circuit Gilles Villeneuve, a place where rubber meets road, where legends are forged, as teams remedied themselves for an impending duel, the Ferrari 412T2 stood at a pivotal crossroad. The V12 powerhouse is already an icon in its own right, but it had to prove itself against the emerging dominance of these V10s. For Ferrari, it wasn't just another race, it was their best shot at showcasing the might of the V12. Come qualifying day, it was a very familiar narrative. Schumacher, with his unparalleled finesse, claimed pole for Benetton Renault. Not far behind him were Hill and Coulthard, vying to challenge the front runner. But the real intrigue lay slightly behind the Ferrari of Berger and Alesi, poised in fourth and fifth, setting up to disrupt the status quo. When the lights went out, Schumacher, ever the maestro, shot ahead, dictating the rhythm. But the Ferraris lurked, with Alesi and Berger strategically navigating the chaos of the initial laps, skillfully maneuvering past rivals and positioning themselves as true contenders for the race. As the race progressed, the 412T2s showed exactly why they were the last of their kind. One by one, contenders faced their reckoning. Coulthard's ambitions were snuffed out on the unforgiving hairpin. Hill, despite his best efforts, was plagued with mechanical gremlins, and the pathway ahead seemed clear for Schumacher, but the V12 beast would not be tamed so easily. A miscalculation saw Berger running on fumes, but a lacy in the sister Ferrari carried the V12's hopes, even as Schumacher seemed unsurmountable in the lead. Then, in another unpredictable twist, Schumacher's car betrayed him, and the narrative was flung wide open. Alesi found himself in the lead, the roar of the V12 echoing the hopes of countless fans. The climax, fittingly, was drama-laden. As Alesi crossed the line, the pent-up emotions of fans overflowed. They swarmed the track, celebrating not only a win, but a monumental moment. However, amidst the euphoria, Alesi's car ran out of fuel on the victory lap, and this moment would create an iconic image. Schumacher gave the victor a lift, epitomizing the sportsmanship of the sport. As the sun set on this monumentous day, whispers circulated in the paddock. Had Schumacher linked a deal with Ferrari for the coming year? Only time would tell, but I'm sure you all know that story. The 1995 Canadian Grand Prix was not just another race. It saw Alesi's first victory, and it was the swan song for the V12, a fitting tribute to an era where raw power met artistry. For Ferrari, this race reaffirmed their legacy, and for the fans, it served as a reminder of the unpredictable, captivating nature of Formula 1. This race was the last win for a V12 in Formula 1. The rest of the season would be dominated by Schumacher and the V10 Renault. But although the Ferrari 412T2 wasn't the most competitive car that year, it's etched into the annals of motorsports history forever. It's the last V12. The Ferrari 412T2 wasn't just an engineering marvel, it was a symphony of sound, power and heritage. Its resounding roar in Montreal was not merely an engine's output, but it was the assertion of its enduring legacy in the ever-evolving tapestry of Formula 1. The echoes of that win in Canada continue to resonate. It wasn't just about a victory, it was about upholding the tradition, a testament to the might and the majesty of the V12. A lasting testament that still ignites conversations and yearnings amongst enthusiasts and racers alike. Sebastian Vettel's clarion call to bring back the V12s isn't just nostalgia. Uh, wish list, top three wishes for the new owners of F1. V12. It's a reflection of the era where engineering met art, where power and beauty coexisted in perfect harmony. It's an era which highlights a simpler time in Formula One. And so, as we look back, we don't just remember a car or an engine, we remember an era a sentiment, an unmistakable roar. The Ferrari 412T2 and its V12 remind us of a time when the heart of a car wasn't just measured in horsepower, but with the stories it created, the memories it fostered, and the legacy it etched into the Formula One soul. 
Although the Ferrari 412T2 was the final V12, there's certainly some others that give it a good run for its money in terms of the best sounding V12. If you're interested in that, on screen is my video about the Matra V12, one of the best sounding engines in Formula 1 history. Give it a watch.